Welcome ladies and gentlemen, YouTube family, it's your boy Neg96 and it's an absolute pleasure. Welcome back to the channel and thanks for staying tuned on this video. In this one, I'm actually going to touch down on a bunch of new strategies I found while playing Payday 2's The Train Heist with myself alongside with my partner X Infected Virus. So folks, this is a rundown for a two player type strategy for this particular heist. And this is my very first video that I'm doing as part of my heist spotlight series. So you definitely want to stay tuned and check out the next heist that I'm going to be breaking down in the near future. For the new folks that just discovered this channel, welcome. Go ahead and hit that red subscribe button to stay tuned for upcoming content as I'm sure you'll love this one. As a final mention, this video is brought to you and sponsored by our affiliation CM Speedrunners. We're leading to be the largest gaming service network in the world where we offer one on one virtual and coaching sessions for demanding games as well as speedrunning full objective stacks for our folks. If you need any gaming assistance, feel free to reach us out. The link is in the description. I honestly found this heist to be quite demanding. Not only do you have to be very careful on how you run on a death sentence, but it does present its own challenges. For starters, in order to unlock the train heist, you need to first find and steal the blueprint from one of the armored vans you encounter when running the transporter heists. So only then are you going to get access to the mission. So right here we're starting off with myself and Virus and we actually resort to going to this courtyard you see here on the map. There are different points you could spawn in on the map from but in this case we spawn in from the back. Even if you do spawn in from the front, we traverse around and shimmy over to this back courtyard area so the spawns don't really matter or affect the outcomes of this game. There are a few variables to keep in mind though when you run the train heist as this heist does tend to be quite RNG dependent with the final outcome and success of your full attempt. So if you see here we're running around the courtyard and there are about three guards patrolling the area and we go ahead and take them out since the game only gives us four pagers we have to use them very wisely here. So. We go around and take care of these guards and make sure to hide them so that the other guards patrolling the bridge areas don't see them while they make their, you know, their patrols. So we use some of our pages here and we secure this entire premises and we kind of use it as our safety net. So every time we need to fall back from when we go ahead and do the main objective, we do so by coming back to this courtyard area here. And you're gonna see more of what I'm referring to later down the line. So over here I am picking up my packages. What can I say, folks? I'm an absolute sucker for packages. I love picking them up. And I like seeing what weapon unlocks I get from completing a package collection. So there's quite a few to get there in the courtyard. Once I do that, I go ahead and proceed onwards to the main objective. Now, folks, if you noticed, I did just ECM jam a train door. Now, the train heist is very unique, I'd say, when it comes to the actual layout and design of the heist itself. If you notice, we're working with a ginormous train here, and this train actually has five separate compartments that you could actually go into and three of those compartments actually contain the primary objectives of this particular heist. One objective being the absolute main objective which are the turrets and the other objectives being the shells or the ammo for the turrets. Now over here myself and Virus were doing the work and we all have our designated roles. He goes ahead and opens some doors while, while I open others as well. If you notice in my inventory, I carry two ECU devices. In order to get two ECU devices, you have to max out the specialist tree for the Shinobi area as part of the ghost tree. 
once you ace the final skill in there, you'll be able to use two ECM jammers. So myself and Virus are both carrying two ECU devices. So we can open up the doors. If you guys did notice earlier, we actually picked up a few body bags, myself and Virus. We actually used an asset purchase before the mission began. So we'd be able to pick up these extra body bags just in case of emergency situations where we'd have to bag up more bodies that we dispose of. We're bad men, folks. The worst of the worst. When running train heist, especially on death sentence like we're doing here, I highly recommend that you dispose of these bodies and hide them within the premises of this particular shack. As the guards patrolling the bridges won't be able to see anything that's tucked away in the far corners of the shack. So if you noticed here, I went ahead and picked up this hard drive because I'm actually going to be opening the next compartment for our primary objective. This card over here doesn't have anything to it, but it could, could be used as a good hiding place should you need it. Over here, I'm encountering my next cart and using my final ECM jammer to open this door. And here I have the next objective. If you notice, the turret is stored in this particular room here. So once I use the hard drive to open up this door, I'll be able to secure the turrets and start delivering them to the getaway vehicle throughout this mission folks there are going to be instances where your hack gets interrupted and in order to resume the hack you'll have to go around to these various lock boxes and rewire the breakers so that they could then go ahead and resume the hacks for you. Now the placement of these breakers are really, really troublesome. Two breakers are placed on both ends of the train. And if you get a really bad guard placement RNG, you never know how they go on about and patrol the areas they're in. So in this case, we have our lockbox here. And we have a guard coming up right on our position. So it'd be rather unwise to go for that guard now. But my team member Virus still goes for it, as you'll see here. I got lucky here and I got two more packages off that one trade alone. So he's picking that lock here. The guard actually decided to walk back. So virus is completely in the clear and able to rewire that time lock. And that was a really close call there by that guard there. Sometimes these guards are really sneaky folks. You never know when they come up right on your six. And before you know it, you'll get detected especially on death sentence where they have increased peripheral sight. Further along we triggered yet another breaker spawn. But since we already established the courtyard as being our safety net, the two breakers in the back are actually less risky to hack since we're clear on most ends. So I went ahead and ran through there and since I'm clear, I'm gonna go ahead and pick this lock now and go ahead and rewrite the wiring in the breaker box. to finally resume the hack. Now that that's been situated, the door has finally been unlocked for the turret. And since 
we've already opened this other door in the past with shells I'm gonna go ahead and start transporting all the bags if the area is clear of course so you want to keep a lookout on all the guards as you notice I tucked away the shells behind that pitchfork so the guard on the topmost area of the bridge won't be able to spot them it's quite sneaky if I say so myself now if you notice my current position here on the map I'm actually gonna stay in this position as a lookout for virus is gonna go ahead and go to the other side of the train and I'm actually going to be keeping eyes for him while he's taking care of those cards now if you see here our getaway vehicle arrived at the courtyard another thing to keep in mind is that the location of the getaway vehicle is also RNG dependent if you haven't had enough RNG in this game you could either get the spawn that we had which we'd say is the best spawn to get or you could get the spawn that spawns all the way by the entrance on the left side of the train all the way down where you'd have to use zip lines on both ends of the train to get the bags to that drop off and safe and secured over there so we got lucky here and we got a closer getaway spawn so virus is going ahead and making his way to extract the final bits of the turret the turret does have three compartments to it so you'll just have to tear it down three times which demands for three separate bags thrown in the getaway vehicle once we go ahead and secure these bags we'll actually complete the very first objective of the heist once that's done we could proceed over to the next objectives so virus went ahead and delivered that bag there and now i went ahead and delivered mine if you notice i really wanted to deliver another a shell bag in there but that car just went up and went away now that it's back I'm gonna go ahead and proceed with the next objective which is to secure 20 of these shotgun or no not shotgun these turret ammo bag shells in the back of the transport vehicle so while I'm doing this virus is going up ahead and taking care of the next set of spawns I'm gonna go ahead and disrupt that process really quick so I can keep a lookout for him and make sure to tell them of the upcoming enemy spawns if you notice there that area got a little too hot so he couldn't quite complete his his uh, lockbox animation because he had a guard coming right up on his six o'clock so <laughs> instead of risking detection he went ahead and stopped opening it I have a little more leeway to complete some of my objectives while virus is on going and doing his objective we've already established that he'd be taking care of all the arrangements in the frontmost part of the train while I'd be sticking to this back side here and providing the lookout support for him So now that the coast is a bit more clear, he's going ahead and picking the lockbox and rewiring the breaker box so that we could resume with our hard drive hack. And Virus did go ahead and set up the zip line. So now he could actually transport all those bags from that side all the way down to my side just to ensure a bit more efficiency on our ends of the heist. These are where the bags are going to be dropped off momentarily. Now that that door has been opened and fires back up the turret shells, I'm going to start exporting 
all these bags that he sends my way via the zip line. I'm doing this work here while he's also doing his work with sending the remainder of the bags down the zip line just so we could save some more of our time doing it. Now that he's finally back with the final turret shell of the primary objective, we have successfully secured all 20 shells and all three pieces of the turret. So all that's left to do now is to turn this mission in, folks. And there you have it. That there is the train heist done in full stealth on the death sentence difficulty, the hardest difficulty in the game. So just to tell you folks, it could be done in full stealth and it's rather quite fun to do because we get to work together as more of a team to make sure that we don't get caught by the guards. And it's awfully fun being sneaky. For those of you running the train heist, I hope these strategies here helped you out. I hope you got a little more insight over doing full stealth on this particular heist. And for those of you not playing this game, I'm glad you could see what a marvelous design this particular heist came out to be. I'm Neg96, and if you liked my content, do not hesitate to hit that red subscribe button and stay tuned for my upcoming videos. Y'all have a good one, stay safe, and stay responsible.